Okay, so since I'm sharing this as a video as well, uh, no reason to go anywhere but fast. So first topic is comments. So in Python, we're gonna use the pound sign or hashtag to write a comment. Um, comments should explain um, uh, a reasoning, a why, uh, why the code is what it is. What's the purpose, ideally? If we want to write a multi-line comment, well, we can either do three uh, quotation marks or uh, three, sorry, three, um, what am I trying to say here? Apostrophes? Three apostrophes or uh, three quotation marks, and then we can write whatever we want on whatever number of lines of code that we need. And of course, that's also demonstrated down below here with a uh, little agenda that I'm going to go through. Printing is of course always super useful because we get to see something printed out on the screen here. So if I go and run this at the bottom, I have eventually, eventually, hello printed right there. And of course in a different editor, yours might show up differently. But this is what mine looks like. Moving on to variables. So the variables are how we keep track of information that we want to use later. So it starts off with a name. In fact, we can name our name name. Uh, and then a value, and we set it equal to a value, and this is not mathematical equals, but this is something called assignment. We assign the value to the variable name. And then we can use this later on. So if we want to print uh, something like hello, I need that as a quote, or I need that as a string, hello to a person, we can use that variable's name and it will get replaced with the value of the variable. Um, and this plus sign is sometimes different in just different contexts. If we add uh, four to it here, right, it's not gonna print 64, it's gonna print 10. But here, this is gonna print hello Neil when we run it. And there are our outputs right there. All right, uh, functions. All right, so whenever we have some sort of action, I'm gonna put it actually at the top here. So functions, what's good about functions is uh, if we have an isolated action that we might wanna take repeatedly, that's the perfect thing to put it in a function. So we create a function with def for define, and then the function's name. Usually it should be some sort of verb, right? Variable names should be nouns, typically, uh, and function names should be verbs. And then a set of parentheses. And my function is uh, not gonna take any arguments at first, and I'll change that in a second here. And so then it'll just print out, uh, it'll just print out hello, actually I'll just move this up here. We determine when a function begins and when it ends based on indentation. So this is part of the function and this is not because it's not indented. We could have multiple lines of our function. That's fine too. But if we want our function to do different things depending on uh, the, the, ver the values that we give it, we have to give it some values. So let's actually give it a name right here and then have it say hello to the name. So now get rid of this code. I can call the function. So this defines the function. This is just like a recipe. You know, this is where you have cake making instructions in your recipe book, but you haven't made any cake yet. So the making of cake uh, call happens when we actually call the function. We call it by name. So do stuff, another set of parentheses. And then inside of that set of parentheses, we have to pass in the value that we want to give to the function. So here I'm using the variable name the, the, the value given by name is what's gonna be passed to the do stuff function. So when I run it, right, it does print out hello Neil and then my nonsense string that I also had following that. Uh, it doesn't have to be a variable. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be a, the same variable as the name that I used up here, right? I could pass in, I don't know, hello cake. So then it says, hello cake, right? It's gonna respond differently based on what I give to it. 
Now, the other important thing that functions do is they can uh, make a calculation. So there's a do stuff, and then I'll make one that's calculate stuff. And I'll give it an X and a Y. Those are good variable names for just some generic numbers. And then I'll have it make a calculation. I'll say Z equals X plus Y, very basic. And then we'll return Z. So return is the key thing here. It not only ends a function, but it gives back the result of whatever it did. So now, if I do calculate stuff, and I pass it in that X, and I don't have to use the same X there, and I pass in another 10 right here, well, I have to be careful. If I run this, I have my hello cake and my soy de blah, 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 but I don't have anything else. It didn't do anything with this because I didn't capture that returned value in another variable. I need to capture it with the variable name, some variable name, I just made up a new one, and an equal sign. And then if I want to do something with it, now I'm just going to do the basic simple thing of printing it. I have to print it. So now we'll have actually a number show up and there's 16 right there because I passed in six and I added 10. All right, moving right through our agenda here. So now we're through functions. Let's go to if statements right here. Let's, uh, let's clean this code up just a little bit. I want to leave some of these things in because they might be useful later on. Uh, let's get rid of these for now though. Okay, so if statements. So if gives us the first semblance of intelligence or responsiveness in our program where we can do something differently based on the value of something. So we might say like if x, if x, if x is greater than five, let's print out that, I don't know, x is bigger, bigger than something, bigger than five at least. So if I run it, now I'm going to print out bigger, but if all I do is change the value of X and I run it again, now I, I don't print anything out. So it would have printed between these two lines of code. Let's actually just get any sort of print statement in there so we can see what our output is. All right, so it prints hello right there, but it doesn't print anything else. So now it's responsive to changes in variable values. But suppose I want to do something if it's not bigger, like in this case, obviously, you know, the obvious thing to do would be to print smaller. If it's, it's not bigger, it might be smaller. Actually, smaller or equal. You gotta be specific about these things. So now, if I run it, it will print out smaller or equal. So it will do one or the other of if and else, but it's always gonna do one of them, right? Else means otherwise. You know, if not the first thing, then otherwise do the second thing. Now, of course, snuck into our agenda right here is suppose we want other things to happen. What if we want other conditions? Uh, I meant elif is what I meant right there. So elif, let's say they're equal. So then we'll move the equal into here and we will get rid of the equal from here. Now, one of these is still absolutely going to happen, must happen. I'm gonna change the X to five just so we can print out the equal here. And only the equal is gonna be printed along with the hello, of course. So there we go, hello and equal printed right down there. And if we delete the else, another thing to note is one of these things does not have to happen now. Since there's no otherwise, we could have none of these things. So let's take the X back to three. This program should print hello it will check is x greater than five, is x equal to five, and if neither of those is true, it will just do nothing more. So there we go, we have the hello right there, and that's all it does. Moving right along, let's go to four. So four is a loop, so four loops, and these are good for counting, or uh, changing by specific increments. Right, so we might say for i in range 10, and we can print i. So we're gonna print the numbers zero through nine. An important thing to note is that we won't necessarily go all the way up to, I mean, not necessarily, we are not gonna go up to that number in the range. We're gonna go up to one less. How many times did we repeat though? We've repeated 10 times. So actually, let me demo that really quick. So repeated, how many times? Well, we have zero right here. And then I'm gonna say repeated equals repeated 
plus one, and then we'll print out repeated at the end and see how many times did we repeat? Well, there we go. We repeated 10 times right there. So the 10 is how many times we're repeating. It's not the number that we're going up to. We're going to go up to one less than that number in terms of I. And I is totally arbitrary. Uh, you don't need to use that variable. You could use a much longer variable name. This is kind of silly, uh, but I'm just demoing here. And it'll still print out the exact same thing, zero through nine right there. All right, um, I'm gonna sneak into my agenda an extra thing, which is a list. So suppose we want to keep track of a variety of items. We'll have a bunch of numbers that we wanna keep track of. Well, we can use these square brackets. So numbers is just the variable name, same as under the other, any other variable name. We can set it equal to a list. And we separate the values in our list with commas. It's like a variable that holds lots of different things. It's a, a cabinet that you can fill up with lots of uh, objects or values in this case. And I put this here because loops are also really useful for going through um, uh, lists. So we could say for uh, num in range length numbers, and then we could print out num. Uh, no, sorry, we couldn't do that. This is an index right here. So we could print out numbers bracket index. Now the names don't matter, I'm just making them cl for clarity, right? The index should be the same right here. So let's go ahead and run it. And now I've printed out the numbers that I put into my list. You can see my list right there and the values printed out down there. Now, if you don't need the index, right? I mean, so if I could, I could put the, the index right here and then like, I don't know, give a little space and then the numbers, right? So running this very quickly. Now I have the index on the left and the value on the right. Maybe I want to do this. I don't need the index. I'm going to do this a little bit more simply. So this is what I was intending on doing before. I could say for num in and just say numbers. And this is a convenient for loop that's just going to go through and print out each and every value in order from the numbers list. So I go run it, and there are my values again, right there. Okay, so we got while loops, objects, and imports, and then we'll be done. So for loops we said are good for counting or changing by specific increments. So while loops are useful. When we want to repeat, but we don't know how long. And the example that I usually give with this is um, something like, you know what, we're not actually using this stuff up here, so we'll clear that out. The example I give with this is using input, right? So uh, feedback will be my variable, and I'll ask the user, um, how are you today, question. And then uh, I can say while feedback uh, equals, okay, I'll say, uh, I'll, keep, I'll keep asking for more feedback. And this is always the example I give here. Um, and I'll say, no, really, how are you today, right? I just have this infinite loop that's gonna keep asking over and over and over again. Uh, and then I'll, I'll respond if they, if they finally say, not okay. And I'll say, I don't know, I knew it. So I run this here. Prints out, you'll notice at the very bottom right here, how are you today? I know this is different from PyScriptor. This is just how Visual Studio does it. How are you today? And uh, I'll say, okay. No, really, how are you today? And I'll say, okay. And it'll keep asking me over and over and over again, right? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Um, not so good now. Now I'm annoyed by all this question asking. And it says, ah, I knew it. All right, so those are while loops. Objects. So let's quickly see how quickly we can throw together an object. So objects are defined by classes, right? Class, wait, what just happened? That was a weird autocomplete. Class is like the def for a function. Um, it's defining an object. So what kind of object do we want? We want a uh, fraction object, all right? And so the fraction object, we're gonna initialize it with this underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore function right here. And it's gonna have a numerator and a denominator, all right? 
And to remember those values inside of this object, we need to say self dot. So we'll have self dot numerator equals our numerator and we'll have self dot denominator equals our denominator. And maybe we want to like get the decimal value of this fraction. So we'll have def get decimal uh, and any sort of function that belongs to this object. Uh, we're going to put self inside its parentheses. That's one way we indicate that it can refer to itself. Uh, and then we'll say um, return self.numerator. And even though this variable self.numerator doesn't appear inside of this function, because it belongs to the, the object, we can use it inside the function here. So we'll return self.numerator divided by self.denominator right there. But this, like a function uh, definition, is just a recipe for creating a fraction. We haven't actually created any fractions yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We will say um, half is a, a boring fraction where the numerator is one and the denominator is two. And then we will ask uh, half for its decimal value by saying half, that's the variable that refers to our fraction object. And we'll say get decimal. What is your decimal value right here? Uh, and then let's print it out as well. And there's our 0 0.5 right there. So we created this object. And now we did a lot of code to get that 0 0.5 to print out on the screen. That's a difficult thing with programming is that there's a lot of stuff you have to visualize that is not visualized for you necessarily. So we have this whole big set of instructions to create this fancy, fancy object. We pass it a one and a two for numerator and denominator. We call its function and we get the result and then we just print it out. And that might be all we see. And that's one of the biggest difficulties in my opinion with uh, computer programming. So that's our object. And lastly, let's talk about imports. I don't know if we formally talked about imports before. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a new file. So here's my new blank file. And I'm gonna put the fraction class in it. And this is typically how we wanna organize uh, our classes in separate, separate files. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna name the file uh, fraction lowercase. I need to name it fraction lowercase because it'll be tricky if I name it the exact same thing as the class name, which is an uppercase fraction right here. And now I'm gonna go back to example. Now this code won't run, or I mean, it'll break, it'll try and run, right? So here's my error, name error right there. Fraction is not defined. I tried to create this fraction and it doesn't know what I'm talking about. I need to import that other file that has the code that I need. So I can import fraction and I can do that because these are sa saved in the same folder. These two files are in the same folder. And that's not enough either. If I try and run it again, it still won't know what fraction is. Name error, fraction is not defined, capital F fraction. Because fraction is the file name and inside of that file is a class named capital F fraction. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say fraction dot capital fraction, right? This class right here belongs to, it's inside of this file right here. S similarly, this dot also means belong to, right? Half is our object of type fraction. I want to get the decimal, I wanna call the get decimal function that belongs to half right here. And so now this will work and we will have a half printed out right there. All right, so that was my summary of all of computer programming one in just about 20 minutes. And that was our agenda that we went through. And I will share this video with you in case you want a refresher uh, now, later, over the summer, who knows what. Very short class today. Thank you all for uh, a wonderful year, kind of difficult there at the end, I realize, um, but we made it through. So, um, that's all I have. Thank you very much. You guys are dismissed. Bye. Thanks, Mr. Holt. Thanks, Holt. Thanks, Holt.